Welcome back. Last week, our scenic route through Utah led us into Arizona as we faced the biggest mistake in van life we have made to date, 11 miles from the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We are Jim, Ember, and Cynthia, and today we tell you how we got out of a sticky situation and what we learned from it as we pick up our pace and make our way to a border crossing into Canada through Sweetgrass, Montana, where we ended up spending more time than we had hoped. Thank you for being here with us today as we overcome a few more obstacles, learn from our mistakes, as we make our way back to Alaska. If you've been following us for a while, then you know that we have recently picked up our pace and we're putting on a lot of miles, seemingly flying by some of the most beautiful parts of the United States. But that leaves us something to look forward to, because we will be returning to Arizona and Utah, but we would probably need years to see it all. And today, because of this new pace, we made a few mistakes along the way breaking nearly every rule of overlanding we have ever created for ourselves because rules are made to be broken with discretion, right? We've broken the not arriving after dark rule so many times that it should no longer even be a rule because we tend to rely heavily on the amazing lights on our van after the sun goes down. Jim was so excited about this spot he had heard about, right on the edge of the Grand Canyon overlooking the Colorado River, that we were feeling good about breaking a few rules. But that changed soon enough. It was 7.30 in the evening when we turned down this unmaintained forest service road that meandered between public and private property. And the other mistake we made, which was more cutting corners than anything, was not airing down our tires. Most of the time we aren't sure of the conditions of these roads that take us to these beautiful places. And generally, they aren't paved. It got dark and we could hear the thunder and see the lightning and getting out of our van wasn't on our agenda. We simply wanted a quiet spot to sleep and hopefully wake up to an amazing view in the morning to enjoy our coffee before heading north. But not only did it start to rain, the sky opened up and it started to pour, creating a flash flood across the road in front of us. We don't mind crossing a little water from time to time, but getting stuck in a flash flood was the first thing that came to mind and the last thing we wanted to happen. We contemplated it because we have crossed worse, but those were actual rivers. Another thing we learned is once we got past that washout, there was probably going to be more. So we backed up and turned around. Not really sure where to go though, because we were miles away from anything and seeking out another location at this time of night wasn't ideal. Up the road, we spotted a fire pit and Jim pointed his nose towards it. He drove off the road and we sank. There was no driving out of this one. What are your thoughts? What happened? Well, we got into the soft stuff. I don't know if it's easier. <laughs> to what? Bye. I guess he's figuring it out. But this is what we're built for. Four-wheel drive, max tracks, and a winch if things get really rough. It was now 9.30 at night, 
and we had been driving all day. And now we're facing intermittent downpours with no cell phone service, and the nearest traveled road was 25 miles away. And we hadn't seen another human since we filled up with diesel. Jim grabbed our Max tracks off the roof of the van, and we only had one shovel. So Jim dug out from behind each wheel. I placed the Max tracks down, readjusted, and just like that, we were out. No drama, believing in ourselves and our gear to get out of a situation we should have never been in in the first place. At the first sign of heavy rain, we should have turned back towards higher ground because this summer proved that flash floods in Arizona are not to be taken lightly. <laughs> we were stuck. <laughs> so we held our ground right where we were for the rest of the night and decided to check out the damage when we were a little bit more rested in the morning. Wow, babe. Good job. Now all of that is in the past and we have a great story to tell about getting stuck just shy of one of the most spectacular boondocking spots along the Grand Canyon. But we have more adventures ahead of us today including a stop at Horseshoe Bend and straight up to Great Falls, Montana where we faced new challenges and learned lessons about crossing the border from the United States into Canada during a pandemic. This is what everything looks like this morning. Good morning. Are you ready to play? Yep. This is gorgeous. No idea that this is what this is going to look like this morning. Yeah, look at that. So that's where we thought we were going to stop because we didn't cross the flash flood over there. We weren't sure where this road goes. Obviously now we see it goes up and around and thought we would stop here. We got ourselves in good. Now to figure out what we're going to do with the rest of today. If we're going to go back and try to find the rim. So we're going to test the difference of airing down versus not airing down. We already know how that's going to really work.
Or I ain't gonna live like this no more. Most of my life I've been waging war. I found peace, I could have sworn. What she did shook me to the core. And I ain't gonna live like that no more. should have found the door Oh, when I get going you can hear me roar and you know I can't live like this no more Oh, I ain't gonna live like this no more hurting as bad as the years before living in a lie I can't Airing up and airing down is, it's worth it. The ride was just so much better with less air in our tires. And then it just took us about a half hour to air back up because we have to do our tires individually. But I think I know what I'm getting Jim for Christmas because they have this air compressor that has like four prongs on it. I saw somebody using it one time and um, I think as much as we air up and air down, we need one. But shh, don't tell him. <laughs> I think it'd be a great Christmas gift. Anyway, uh, we're done with all this fun. We're getting ready to hit the road. Oh, the other thing, the other thing about airing up and airing down that's kind of a disadvantage is our compressor makes, um, our compressor makes us, our compressor is, awesome. Um, our compressor is a tad, what do we call it? In order to use our compressor, we have to put the hood up and we have the hood up and we're taking care of the tires and people are stopping to make sure that we're okay, which is really, really awesome. But yeah, that's kind of a disadvantage of it. We were able to put the compressor in the back. We're ready to hit the road. Well, we ended up taking a little detour that we weren't expecting to take, or at least I wasn't expecting to take it because if you've been following us for a while, you know that Jim is extremely afraid of heights. And uh, right now we're getting ready to cross a bridge. And the first thing you see before you cross this bridge is... Why in the world would someone jump? No urges, okay? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. We'll be right in the middle. Right, let's ride the middle and we'll ride the middle of the bridge <laughs> and we'll go as far as you think you can go. And as soon as you start to feel anything, we'll just come back. So, this is the Navajo footbridge. The arch, okay, I'm gonna read the sign to you. I don't know this stuff. I'm just gonna, the sign says that the arch is 616 feet and the total length is 834 feet and height is 467 feet. It looks like it was built between 1927 and 1928. Oh. Throwing objects from the bridge is prohibited. Jumping is prohibited and this is for pedestrian use only. <laughs> so let's go.
This is a once in a lifetime freaking opportunity. Seriously, we are crossing the Colorado River on <laughs> the Navajo footbridge. How amazing is this? Wow. Look, there's people floating. Solid. You're good. The wind's blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Your beard's going to catch a light. <laughs> Bye, Jimmy. <laughs> Well, we made it across the whole bridge. <laughs> Took pictures. I'm proud of you. I still don't like heights. This doesn't solve it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this doesn't cure it. <laughs> The Navajo footbridge was built in 1928, but a new bridge was built to accommodate larger, more modern vehicles, while the footbridge remains a historical landmark. It's simply amazing to consider how these two hunks of metal bridging a giant gap in the Earth's crust were ever created by mankind's imagination. Horseshoe Bend has been one of our bucket list locations for as pretty much as long as I can remember. Probably since Instagram came about. It's probably where I saw the first picture it was on Instagram. And then I thought, well, you know what? We have to go there. So here we are. It's about a half a mile walk to it. $10 to get in. Let's go check it out.
this is where we stayed last night. Shanto Marketplace. It was quite comfortable. For 104 miles, continue straight. It was pretty busy. Yeah, they say don't lie. <laughs> but it worked. And from here, we started driving back north once again through Moab, Utah, where we turned off the cameras for a few days. Except for the night Ember saved us from a baby rattler that had crawled under our van just after we arrived at camp, okay. and she alerted us to its presence. Ember just found something, <laughs> and I'm so happy that she did, but let's take a look. Yeah, we have to move now. Can you see that? Well, anyway, we just found a new spot. Hopefully there's no rattlers here. Idaho was one big smoky blur from wildfires as we pulled into Great Falls, Montana to a good old fashioned Camp Walmart, which we learned soon enough we were going to become very familiar with, the little city of Great Falls, Montana. It's a super crappy sign, Montana. Good morning and welcome to Great Falls, Montana. This is an incredibly beautiful state and instead of somewhere out in the wilderness, we ended up staging here at beautiful Camp Walmart. And we did that because this morning we gotta get our COVID testing completed. We have to take Ember to the vet and then we're gonna continue our drive up to the border while we wait for our test results to come in. So welcome to the journey back to Alaska, getting back across the border in these times and we're hoping everything is gonna go smooth. We'll take you along for the ride. And this was a great time to make a few repairs, including a little screw that had come loose along the way that was causing a terrible grinding sound when we turned. So what better place than to get that fixed up, go get Ember taken care of, get our COVID tests, and then Jim whips up another amazing Instant Pot inspiration. Hi, welcome back. How did that go? Everything looks good. Did you have fun? She got a treat. She's deemed healthy to cross the border. They're really nice. They squeezed us in at the last minute. Timing just worked out perfect and they were super helpful. And now she's on record here, so next time we just schedule in advance. Awesome. So we have a secondary vet now. <laughs> Great. So we recommend that um, when we come into a place like this before you cross the border to think about it ahead of time with your pet and make an appointment to get that Certificate right before you cross Yep. because I called quite a few places and they said no that they were booked out until October So it's a good idea to think ahead when it comes to getting the 
health certificate, right? Absolutely. So these guys were awesome. So the really health certificates are good for 30 day periods. So you could actually do it before you leave wherever you're coming from. Like we left Alaska, but we had gone to the vet several weeks in advance. In this case, we didn't really plan too well on coming back up because we didn't know when we were going to cross. So recommendation, recommendation is to always plan ahead and make sure that you have those certificates for your for babies to travel along with you. Go play, go have fun. Go play with your friends. I think they kind of like you. Go on, go have fun. No! no. <laughs> There's a puddle, we know she's gonna find it. No, oh, no. <laughs> she's gonna be in there in two seconds. You tired? Stay out of the puddle. Find some shade. And tonight we're gonna to do a pork tenderloin. It's already pre-seasoned. So all I'm gonna do is drop in some oil, throw it on saute. We're gonna sear up this meat real quick. So the first thing we wanna do, add some oil to the Instant Pot. And we're gonna sear both sides of our meat. And then once that's complete, it'll probably take two to three minutes on each side. Then we'll move on to the rest of the recipe. Both sides of our meat are brown. We're just gonna take one cup of beer. And we're using Vanish West Coast Pale Ale. Those at the Rebel Rally will know what that is when you see it. We'll pour that in. Since this was already pre-seasoned, we're not going to add any seasoning. We're just going to close it up. Make sure our knob is set. We're going to pressure cook on high for 15 minutes. This was given to us by Lance from Owl Vans. We just took a sip of it. It's pretty good. I like the label. Mm -hmm. Now we're making dinner with it. <laughs> Drink a lot, use a little. Our cook time is done. We did a 15 minute natural release. Now we're gonna quick release anything that's left. Which is nothing. Open it up. 
So there you have it, pork tenderloin in the Instant Pot, super easy. Now we're gonna cook up some rice for the side and have a wonderful dinner, er, and have a wonderful dinner. It's been hard in America It's been tough feeling sad It's been hard in America After four days in Montana I just got my results back I'm negative for COVID and we're still waiting on gyms which we assume is going to come really soon, but this has been a very long four days waiting. And we promised to tell you everything that happened, why it happened, but we're going to start packing up and head towards the border. Hopefully Jim's results will come soon. It's been hard in America. It's been tough feeling sad It's been hard in America I never thought it'd get so bad I wish that I had a big jet plane I'd fly the tears away just finished packing up I got my results in both of us are negative which means we can now safely transit into Canada we just have one last thing to do and that's put all of our information into the arrive can app and basically that's just a travel plan and all of our documents put into an application with our arrival date of tonight we're gonna start driving to the border it's about 120 miles from here so hopefully in two hours we're crossing into Canada. Here we go, PCR test negative. Goodbye, Great Falls. Thank you for your hospitality for the last four days. <laughs> Thank you, Walmart. Now that we're on the road, it's a good time to tell you what's been going on with us and the little hang up that we've had getting across the border. We made an appointment at Walgreens in Great Falls and it was for the following day at 10.30 in the morning. We still don't have the results back from that test and that was four days ago. Canada requires test results within 72 hours. So we knew that those tests results probably wouldn't come back quick enough because they sent theirs to Tennessee. So we ended up getting tested at Alluvion, which is the second place here in Montana, Great Falls. Those results came back within 24 hours. Lesson learned. Do a little research, find out how long the testing turnaround is. Walgreens did say it would be two to four days. It's been over four days. Alluvion said, yeah, maybe within 24 hours because they have their own on-site testing facility. So it's best to choose somewhere that has their own testing facility rather than one that gets sent off. We were informed about Alluvion while we were sitting at the border waiting for our results. Uh, the lady next to us was doing the same thing, waiting for results. She had gotten tested at Walgreens also. We called the lab, we found out that they were backlogged, and we both decided to drive back to Great Falls to get retested through Alluvion. 
and paid off. But another person that came up got tested with Walgreens from Cheyenne, and he had his results within 48 hours. So it's hit and miss. You never know. But the other lesson learned is watch the news, because we didn't even know that there was an increase in COVID cases. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. So with that said, we are ready to get back to Alaska with everything that's happening after watching the news last night. It's time to go back. So right now we're headed into Shelby, hopefully grabbing something to eat. And then, fingers crossed, we have everything in line. We'll be crossing the border into Canada. You can also check the U.S. to Canada border wait times on the Canadian government website, travel.gc.ca. And right now, I just looked it up and it says that where we're crossing at Coots or Sweetgrass, it said five minutes and then I looked it up again and it said that there's no delay. So that's good. So, what have we learned today? We faced a lot of challenges this past week, none of which we couldn't overcome. And the mistakes we make are our bridge between inexperience and wisdom. And finally, for the first time in two years, through major changes and challenges, we're making peace with our future. Next week, we cross into Canada on our way back to Alaska, and the adventure continues, so be sure you're subscribed to see what we get ourselves into next. Say hello in our comments section below, and as always, stay happy, healthy, and safe. We'll see you again soon.